Welcome back, mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. I am excited to be back with you today as we really are starting to wind down this glutamine micro series of all of the known glutamine inhibitors. And we have covered a lot of ground so far. We are quite a ways into this. And I want to tie up some loose ends. And that is some of the repurposed medications that have been talked about in other platforms, but I want to make sure that they're hit at least in some way, shape or form. Now, if you're new to this channel, this is going to be a difficult place to start. And I would highly recommend you start with how metabolic therapy checkmates cancer as a way to get into what we are talking about at this point. But this channel does build on itself. So starting at the beginning would be the ideal, although we're about video number 65 in that process. The repurposed medication that I'd like to talk about today is called sulfasalazine. And sulfasalazine is a medication that's been around for a long time, and it seems to have profound effects on glutamine utilization as well as ferroptosis. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give a background about what sulfasalazine actually is, okay? So sulfasalazine is a potent disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, or a DMARD, which helps manage autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. This activity discusses sulfasalazine's therapeutic implications, contraindications, and mechanisms of action, crucial elements indispensable for the interdisciplinary team involved in patient care. So I'm not a rheumatologist, and I don't pretend to be one, but I am an internal medicine doctor, and I take care of people with rheumatologic conditions on a regular basis. I can't say that I've seen sulfasalazine routinely used for RA, like it suggests here, or polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis, but I do see it as being one of the early medications used for inflammatory bowel disease, and that would be things like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. That is true, and it has been around for a long, long time. What you may not be aware of is that it has been hiding in plain sight the entire time in this graphic, our classic graphic, and it is at the top here, sulfasalazine, and it's interacting with this SLC7811, and that's how I want to discuss it today. So in this first paper, it's titled Sulfasalazine Inhibitor of Cysteine Glutamate Antiporter Reduces DNA Damage Repair and Enhances Radiosensitivity in Murine Melanoma. And it says here that sulfasalazine decreased glutathione concentrations and resistance to hydrogen peroxide in melanoma cells, but not in mouse embryonic fibroblasts. It synergistically enhances the cytokilling effect of X-ray radiation in these melanoma cells and inhibited cellular DNA damage repair and prolonged cell cycle arrest after X-ray irradiation. Furthermore, in an in vivo transplanted melanoma model, sulfasalazine decreased intertumoral glutathione content, leading to an enhanced susceptibility to radiation therapy. And in the second paper, titled Suppression of the SLC7811 Glutathione Axis Causes Synthetic Lethality of KRAS Mutant Lung Adenocarcinoma, it says here that, furthermore, SLC7811 inhibition by either genetic depletion or pharmacologic inhibition with sulfasalazine resulted in selective killing across a panel of KRAS mutant cancer cells in vitro and tumor growth inhibition in vivo, suggesting the functionality and specificity of SLC7811 as a therapeutic target. Importantly, we further identified a potent SLC7811 inhibitor, HG106, that markedly decreased cysteine uptake and intracellular glutathione biosynthesis. And I want to look at the picture that is associated with this particular paper. And this is talking again about KRAS lung cancer cells. So this is the mutant KRAS mediated increase in glutathione biosynthesis, where we have increases in cysteine. Cysteine is combined with the increased glutamine and glutamate seen in, in cancer cells. We've seen this where it combines with glycine and there now is a, an increase in glutathione production. And because of the hijacking of NRF2 by KRAS and the increases in SLC7811, that exacerbates this process. And we have an issue here where we have basically the shields are up, the armor is on, and these KRAS lung cancer cells have high resistance to oxidative therapies, including radiotherapies. However, when we are able to block SLC7811, and in this case, by using sulfasalazine, now cysteine is decreased in the cells. The glutathione cannot be made. Reactive oxygen species via whatever your soup du jour of oxidative therapies is increased. In this case, they're using radiation. And now we have a cell death cascade 
likely through ferroptosis, but likely through various mechanisms and these KRAS mutant lung cancer cells. Pretty cool. The other pathway that I want to talk about, and this I admit is a busy slide, is talking about the synergistic impact of sulfasalazine with metformin. And this is something we're going to talk about on the next episode, specifically metformin's role with SLC7A11 as well. If you only thought that metformin was involved in glucose control and AMP kinase activation, there's more to the story than that. There are pleiotropic effects of metformin and metformin acts in synergy with other SLC7A11 inhibitors such as sulfasalazine. If you haven't got the picture yet, let me make this very clear to you. We have much more at our disposal than Don. Don has been the poster child for glutamine inhibition since metabolic therapy has been introduced by the man himself, Thomas Seafried. But as you can see, by digging through all of this literature, there are dozens of other compounds that have effects on glutamine uptake, glutamine utilization, and this SLC7M11 glutamine cysteine antiporter, which is responsible for the massive increase in glutathione production and the resistance to apoptosis, ferroptosis, lipid peroxidation, and just reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress in general. So we are chopping wood here. We're hitting everything known in the literature that can affect these pathways that gives you maximum amount of tools in your tool bag to add to the foundations of metabolic therapy. If you like videos like this, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time.